Good morning, everybody, and um, welcome to worship at St. John's. Uh, we're going to forget, not totally forget, but we're going to be mindful of what's going on with the pandemic, but we're not going to concentrate on that today. Okay, we're going to concentrate on worshipping God and also on our shoeboxes and the people who will receive those. So just for this three quarters of an hour, that's what we're going to concentrate on because our God is great, our God is still with us, um, and we are hopeful of the future. I'm going to start by reading Psalm 34, verses 1 to 3. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. My soul will boast in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Um, last time Dean had us standing at the end, I'm going to ask that we stand for our first hymn. Um, you can't sing, but please um, watch the screen and join in in your hearts and your minds with praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. And we'll stand to uh, watch and join in this hymn.
Let us pray. Praise to the Lord, let all that is within me adore him. Father God, we come to you now because you are the only place that we can go. We thank you for who you are. We thank you that you are a creator God, a creator God who continues to create, even in the uncertainty. We thank you that you are a loving God who continues to love us. We thank you that you are a caring God who knows our inmost thoughts, but still loves us and still wants us to continue to adore you and to walk with you through these troubled times. Father, we thank you for each other. We thank you for the fellowship of the church, for our families and friends, for those who have stood with us through these times and who continue to stand with us as we go forward into the future. We confess our need of you. We confess our sins. We know that we aren't always who we should be, that quite often we think only of ourselves and not of others. Father, forgive us and help us to be more outgoing in our thoughts, more considerate of others, more helpful and more giving. Help us to be more like Jesus in these times. Father, we remember all those who join with us today in worship, either in buildings, or at home, online, or those who have sheets of paper that they are reading in your presence. We thank you that there is a swelling of worship to you on this your day, that you are being honoured and you are being glorified. Father, we love you. Father, we worship you. Father, we adore you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This year we wondered whether the shoebox Sunday and our shoeboxes would actually happen, whether they were going to be collected, whether they were going to be processed and then transported all over the world in the middle of this global pandemic. The local collection point should be open from a week on Monday. Um, we will be waiting for instructions that they still are. We pray that they will be, and we will keep you up to date on all that. Uh, we trust and believe that our great God will make a way for these gifts to be taken where they will be appreciated and greatly, gratefully received, that they will be a source of joy and blessing to the children and families who receive them. I'd like to thank everyone who has spent time packing and bringing a shoebox, and to those who have gone online and donated a shoebox online. We're going to watch this year's video now and remind ourselves why we do this and, and what it is that we are doing as we pack small presents into boxes to send the love of Jesus Christ to other people at Christmas time. The children are completely overjoyed. It's a real celebration. So many smiles on their faces. Smiles are all over. Yeah, these kids behind me are so excited because they've just received their boxes. Kids are so excited. Giving them a gift, do it in Jesus' name. That's what this is all about. Operation Christmas Child is about expressing the love of God. It's its wonderful way to enter into the Christmas spirit in its true meaning. 
Operation Christmas Child has grown hugely over 30 years since it started here in Britain, but now it is a worldwide project to send millions of shoeboxes all over the world. That's what I love about Operation Christmas Child. It knows no borders and knows no boundaries. It's all about sharing the name of Jesus Christ. So the shoebox journey essentially starts from people in their home packing shoeboxes full of essential items like a toothbrush, some school supplies. Toys and gifts, hygiene items. So there's a real mix. I love choosing the things to go in a shoebox. I like to think about what a child would enjoy receiving. Father, we commit these boxes to you as they start their journey. All sorts of people can help with Operation Christmas Child. It's families, it's churches, it's hundreds of thousands of volunteers that help make Operation Christmas Child so successful. It's so encouraging having people coming into the church, bringing their boxes. Everybody out there who packs shoe boxes, they are spreading God's love. Some of them go by train, some go by camels, some go by ships. These boxes go all over the world, and that is only the beginning. So when the children have got their boxes, they are invited to take part in something called The Greatest Journey. Which is a 12-lesson discipleship program where they learn about the greatest gift, which is Jesus Christ. After a child completes The Greatest Journey, they graduate and receive a certificate and a Bible in their own language. When the light of the gospel is turned on, it makes everything new. Operation Christmas Child opens doors for people to discover what is the greatest gift of all, the love of God through Jesus. It is impacting children. It is impacting families. It is impacting the world greatly. I really encourage you to pack a shoebox and get involved with Operation Christmas Child. Lives are being changed. All over the world, it's brilliant. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for these tennis or shoe boxes that are here, for those that have been packed online, and we pray the blessing of God Almighty upon them as they go from here to whoever will receive them in the next two or three months. We pray that they might bring joy, that they might bring love, that they might bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to the churches who receive them and distribute them, and to the children who will open them as their very own. Father, we thank you for this chance to be part of something global, and we pray that you will bless those who take part and bless the gifts, the giver and those to whom they are given. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to have uh, two Bible readings now. The first is from Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. And Jeff is going to come and read that to us. And then Dean is going to come and read Revelation chapter 7, reading from verses 9 to 17. It's reading from uh, from chapter 5 of Matthew, uh, beginning to read from verse 1. Now when he saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, 
for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Uh, The second reading is taken from Revelation 7, verses 9 to 17. After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honour and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, These in white robes, Who are they, and where did they come from? I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This talk is really about the now and the not yet. We're going to do the not yet now, so we're not doing the now yet. So I hope that you're following it so far as one of my clearest talks. The not yet is what Dean read from the book of Revelation. Here we have the Apostle John's vision of the future, the end of the world as we know it and a glimpse of what heaven might be like. It's meant to give us a bit of hope when life is tough. And who doesn't need a bit of hope at the moment? At this point in the vision, John sees the people of the world standing before the throne of God and in front of Jesus, who is described as the Lamb of God. With hindsight, looking back, we understand the picture of Jesus as a sacrificial lamb. We have been taught about the sacrificial system in the Jewish temple, how animals were slaughtered as offerings to God so that people could have their sins forgiven and be made clean before a holy God. It's something that's very, very foreign 
to us. We, we don't really understand it, but we know that that was the system set up in the Old Testament for people to be clean before God, the shedding of blood. We are familiar with the Easter story when Jesus Christ is nailed to a cross and dies. And it seems to be a disastrous end to a beautiful life. In our minds, this is a big disappointment. As human beings, we look at somebody dying like that and say, what a waste. He had so much more to live for. Surely that can't be what God intended to happen. But we know that this is God's wonderful plan of salvation for the human race. God's own son, who is in nature God, becomes a 100% human being for a limited period of time, 33 years. He is sacrificed as a lamb would be, and by giving his life as a sacrifice, takes the sin of the world on his shoulders. Your sin and my sin, so that we can be free from sin and be brought back into a perfect relationship with our Heavenly Father, as though we had no sin, as though we had never been separated from God. This is something called the Great Exchange, which is why this building is called the Exchange Project, also because it's at the top of Exchange Street. Jesus takes our sin on the cross, and we take eternal life in exchange. This is a gift from God, not to be earned by good works or living a good life, but a gift when we acknowledge our sin and trust in the work of Jesus Christ on the cross to save us. The great exchange, we give Jesus our sin, he gives us eternal life. And in the vision in the book of Revelation, John is seeing people who have been saved on earth now rejoicing in heaven. People are crying out to God and saying, thank you for their salvation. They are worshipping the lamb around the throne of God. And this is what we're told we will do for eternity in heaven. We will worship in the presence of God and of Jesus. It will be an endless Sunday morning service. No, it won't. That is the good news. It will not be an endless Sunday morning service. We will be face to face with God. Here, our services are good. They are a time when we can focus on God and God is present. But heaven will be so much better because we'll be there in front of God and be able to see him and experience him and be surrounded by him. It will be all inspiring as we are overwhelmed with the glory of God. And as we sang in the song last time, we stand amazed in the presence of Jesus, the Nazarene. Surrounded by angels, by the multitude of believers. We will see God face to face and we will live. We will be immersed in love and grace, the like of which we have never experienced on earth. John's vision of heaven shows that we will serve God willingly. God will protect us and there will no longer be any hunger or thirst. God has wiped away all tears and the lamb at the centre of the throne is the good shepherd who will lead us to springs of living water for eternity. These are images that are a little bit out of our understanding, things that we have to accept because they're written in the Bible. They aren't specific. We don't know exactly what they mean. We certainly don't know exactly when they will happen. But it sounds to me like a great place to be when we leave earth, when we go to be in the presence of God. This not now place gives us some hope for the future as we have to live in the world now with all its difficulties and troubles. So if this is the not yet, what is the now? It's what we see all around us, isn't it? The day-to-day -day experiences of our lives, our own struggles and fears, those of people who live with us and near us, 
plus the struggles that we see and hear of people all across the world. Sometimes the now feels too much. It presses in on us and we don't like what we're experiencing in the now. Our cry sometimes goes up, will it ever end? When will it end? Will we come out of it to be in a better state? Where is God in all this? Has he left us? Does he know what we're going through? Does he really care? Is he going to do anything about it now? Yes, our question to God might be, how long, Lord? And the answer might be, not yet. But in the now, God promises that he will never leave us and he is still working. Psalm 46 says, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Not just occasionally, now and then, if we remember to ask him, if we pray uh, once a month, then God will help us. Not just when God feels like it, when he remembers that we are down here and we need help. But God is ever-present, always in the now. Our reading from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, is the beginning of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Great practical teaching about how to live in the now. Be salt and light in your world, where you are living, with the people that you come in contact with. Love your enemies. Give to the needy. Pray. Store up treasure in heaven, not on earth. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't judge. Seek and ask for some of the kingdom of God, the not yet kingdom, to come to earth now. Thy kingdom come. And this teaching suggests how we could live in the now. The first 12 verses have been called the Beatitudes, sometimes nicknamed the Beautiful Attitudes. Jesus tells us that we are blessed and we can be happy and joyful now, even in the middle of the turmoil and the storm. Jesus says that the kingdom of heaven is not just for the future, the not yet kingdom, but it is for the now, even if we are poor or if we mourn or if we are persecuted. Jesus says that we can be comforted by his spirit and we will be rewarded in heaven. The meek will inherit the earth. Those who are hungry and thirsty, physically or spiritually, will be filled. And those who are merciful, pure in heart, and the peacemakers will be blessed by God. Living in the now isn't always easy, but it's helpful to know that there is a future hope the not yet kingdom does exist and it will come. As the Apostle Paul wrote to the Corinthian church in their struggles, we only see a poor reflection now as in a mirror, but one day we will see face to face. We only know in part now, but one day we will know it all in full, just as we are fully known by God. That's what John's vision in Revelation is about, knowing God in full. But that's the not yet. So with the certain and sure hope of eternal life, let's commit ourselves to service, to prayer, and to worship of God in the now. Let's remember that God is always with us, and however long it is, it will end and our future hope will become our now in heaven with God forever. Amen. Let's turn to our prayers of intercession. Let's pray. On this All Saints Day, our prayers of intercession focus on the saints which might just include all of us. 
Glory to you, O Lord, from the whole company of heaven, from the saints in glory, from your people on earth. Father, we give you thanks that in the darkness of this world, your saints shine. May we with them have a share in your everlasting kingdom through Christ our Lord. We give you praise for holy men and women who have been an inspiration to us, those who have set us an example to follow. May your church be inspired by their lives, seek to keep before it their dedication and follow after their vision. We pray for all who are seeking to fulfill their vocation today, for all who seek to quietly dedicate themselves to you and to your glory. Lord of the saints, strengthen our faith. Blessed are you, Lord our God. You have called us to a world full of good things. We thank you for all who have set out to improve our world. We pray for all who work in conservation, for those who care for others, for all who have sacrificed themselves in the service of others, for those who seek to live simply, that others may simply live. Lord of the saints, strengthen our faith. We give you thanks for those who taught us the faith, for those who gave generously and sacrificially for us, for all who have led us in the ways of goodness and truth, may they be rewarded by you. We come now and we pray for our world, for our friends and our families, naming before you those who need our prayers and your help. Father, we pray for those in authority, for our government, leaders of councils, the NHS, and leaders of churches. We pray that you will give wisdom and energy for people to make correct decisions at this time. We pray for those who are suffering during this pandemic, especially those in hospital, care homes, those waiting for operations and scans and results. We pray for our NHS that it won't be overrun. And we pray that our doctors and nurses will have the rest and the care that they need. That this current lockdown, which will come into force this week, will work to slow down the national infection. We pray for those who are hungry, losing their jobs, maybe their livelihood, or struggling with their mental health. Lord and giver of life, help us to help others in the now. Please be our rock, our deliverer, and our hope as we work in the now and look forward to the not yet, to the glorious future that the best is yet to be. We ask all our prayers in and through the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Saviour. Shall we say together quietly the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our final song takes up the echo of what we've been saying today. How long, how long, Lord, will these circumstances that we live in last but we do have a future hope uh, this has been done in lockdown it's about a month old this recording um, it's called the oh lord the clouds are gathering uh, you'll see the famous 
uh, Graham Kendrick uh, singing, it's his song, and he's singing with the Methodist Orchestra and the singers. Uh, and they're all obviously singing at, um, in their own homes or in studios, and it's all being put together through the wonders of modern technology. But the song is the same. Lord, how long? Help us to keep faith with you, to keep walking with you in these difficult times, knowing that the future is there and it's going to be a wonderful future. Oh Lord, the clouds are gathering. <laughs> In the middle of these turbulent times, as we keep being told, let us hold firm to the God that we know, that we worship, and let us sustain each other as we live in the now by helping others and worshipping our God and getting strength and help from him. May the blessing of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore.